PreschoolPianoKids.com is a site dedicated to, to curricula being designed by doctors of psychology for piano students who are 2.7 to 6 years old. The studio located in Dublin, California makes it very clear that a piano teacher who reads a few books on the developmental sciences are not as prepared to design such educational programs as one who devotes his or her time to formal study on the topic. They cite research being done that suggests that Successes in earlier music education are best seen when the child continues lessons after completion of first grade. One of the ways, according to the website, that children develop musically is to create songs by responding to dolls. If their child is at first a silent participator in such an activity, parents should not be alarmed. Later, he or she may play in another area of the classroom, vocalizing with some other dolls, thus displaying a response that is delayed. Can we apply this to siblings that have different success rates? Is a child that struggles at first with piano ultimately going to be as successful as his or her sibling who is having success already? Many times this is evident in the way that a less mature student approaches piano lessons. If the child is the younger of the two siblings, he or she must not be compared to his or her older sibling. Is there the possibility, though, of competition between siblings? leading ultimately to a self-fulfilled prophecy regarding the younger sibling's unease to a musical instrument when comparing his or her ability to the older sibling? Or is the piano itself a good measurement to see which student is more musically talented? While many students are more suitable to one instrument or the other because of omissure and so on. Traditionally, most students have been introduced to music via keyboard instrument. Since music is an oral art form, the traditional way of teaching notation is problematic. Reifinger, 2009, states that children are only able to readily identify notated examples of musical phrases from songs similar to the ones they have been studying in their music classes. So, are two siblings playing on the same instrument or a control variable, able to judge by differences in their playing ability. One such student in my studio, whom we will refer to as Thomas X to protect the privacy of his family's name, was tested in a music cognition study at the Ohio State University. The data is still available by contacting the Department of Psychology regarding the study done by Brink, 1999. His younger brother, Andy, was not as good at sight reading music, but went through the same curriculum as did his older brother, Thomas. Although developmental science has progressed a great deal since the 1990s and Faber and Faber have created my first piano adventures, which may be adapted for the very youngest of beginners, it is my belief after observing the brothers after about seven years of lessons, the older uh, sibling, that there may have been a handicap why, uh, as to why Andy could not play as well. His parents were very nurturing, uh, but oftentimes parents do not divulge information about their children, which may reveal that the child has a learning dif uh, disability. However, the parents were well aware of the differences in their children's ability at school and in music lessons. Finally, according to the Thompson 2006, we are each born with a similar amount of raw talent. Could Andy X have been the result of not being educated in music early enough? Would it have been easier for him to study piano if he had been introduced to music earlier in life? These and many other questions are necessary for us to discuss in order that more research be done. So until we find a way to practice what we will learn from these future studies, we will not know how to progress with the many Andys that we are sure to come across at our music studios.